when the events were unravelling, I was actually watching it happen in one of our intelligence rooms. I immediately took a team of officers down to one of our main control rooms. We kicked into our plan to find out what had happened, who was responsible, making sure that we had everything that we could possibly know about what had gone on to make sure we had the right people in the right places. I think I was on duty for about 27 hours that day. So I went home the following morning. I remember I was travelling home on the train when everybody else was coming into work. And it was, it was a surreal feeling, really, that everybody else could just carry on as normal. Um, and, and rightly so, they should absolutely carry on as normal. But when you've been at, at the sharp end of what's happened, it's hard for you to transition back to normal, if that makes sense. I didn't know Keith, and I don't know any of the injured officers either, but we, you know, we're all on the same team. You've got to stick together. You don't know what's around the next corner, you don't know what's gonna, what is going to be on the end of the phone, the next call that comes in, and you need to be able to rely on each other to be there when you need them. Uh, so when you know, bad things happen, we've got each other to rely on to pick up the pieces. I'd like to do something to support my police family, my colleagues that have been injured, and wider than that as well, officers that have been injured in other incidents or that have been killed on duty or have dependents that need support. And so I looked around and found the Police Dependents Trust and then saw that they were raising money and I thought, well, this is great, it's an ideal opportunity. Let's do what I can to try and raise a profile and raise some cash for these, for these officers that, that need it more than I do. Retired Met policeman Brian Hickman was such an officer in need. He was in the rogue policing unit until an incident at work in 2009 left him with life-changing spinal injuries. I always, always believed I'd be back on motorbikes, and back in cars, back in full uniform, doing the job that I love doing. It took me a good four years to come to the conclusion that I haven't got this miracle cure as I thought they would have. Without a miracle, Brian had to get practical. His injuries restricted his mobility to the point he needed to make adaptations to his home. The Police Dependents Trust provided the help Brian and his family required. No man wants his wife lifting him in and out of the shower um, and also having to go up and down the stairs on your knees. It's, it's, it's not very dignified. Brian, as a police officer, was, I can take on the world. I can do anything. I don't need any help. But actually, there's times in life when you do need help. I've done some research and found the Police Dependents Trust. Then I found out it's actually my situation, my problems, my issues I was having. And two days later, I got an email. They will fund everything. The difference is unbelievable because it has made my quality of life so much better without the police dependence for us. I don't know where I'd be. This lady that's running for the PDT, fantastic. Well, what a girl. You know, I hope she does really well and isn't in too much pain the next day. I'm very proud of working for the Met. Um, I love the Met and um, I, I'm really proud that I'm able to do something positive um, after what has been a you know, her horrendous time for lots of people. It's a marathon for hope. It's going to be a very cathartic experience, probably for me and for lots of other people that were there as well on the day. It would be good to see the best side of London because there are lots of amazing people that live and work in London, and, and I'm sure we'll have a fantastic day. Yeah.